Father God, we love you deep down in our soul. So we're going to praise you this morning. We're going to worship you this morning. We're not going to worry about anything else. We're not going to worry about anybody else. We're just going to praise this morning. How about that? Let's give God some praise this morning. Let's give God some glory this morning. Let him know that we are grateful to him for all that he has done because he's brought us through. He's manifesting his word. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, 
in our hearts that we know that we love Jesus. Thank you. And we know that he's all that we need. And we just praise and bless his name and just give him glory because we see it. We see it. It's nothing that we're doubting. We see the manifestation of his word and we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for who you are in us. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us through, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for answering prayers, Father God. When man doubted, God, you were there, God. You show up, God. And God, we just bless your name. We give your name glory, God. Glory to your name. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah.
your mercy, new mercies that met us this morning. It's your loving touch that woke us up. And God, we come to say thank you. Lord, for your goodness and for your grace, for your kindness, for your provision, for everything that you do for us. And more importantly, who you are in our lives. Blessed God, we've gathered in this place. We've pressed our way through the cold, oh God, to come to this sacred space to worship and to praise your holy name. And so, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh. Inhabit this place, oh God, in such a powerful and and in such a, a, a wonderful way. Take over and lead and guide us. Holy Spirit, have your way in this house. Have your way in the fellowship. Have your way in the worship. Have your way in the preached word. God, as we celebrate, as we commemorate, as we remember the sacrifice of your son, make it real to us. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Amen and amen. Saints of God, we ask that you would turn to hymn number 79 as we sing together the old hymn of the church, At the Cross, At the Cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there, by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Let us stand. Let's sing at last. At 
at the cross. Was it for crimes that I have done? At the cross? Drops of grief can never repay. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Oh, at the cross. It was there Oh, at the cross It was there Sing it one more time at the cross. It was there. Oh, at the cross. to the Lord in prayer together as the church family I'm going to ask um, I'm going to ask if Reverend Fogel will prepare herself to take us to the throne of grace and there's so many needs in the church family and we are certainly um, keeping the Acre family in our prayers we know that uh, they have had a loss in their family. We're asking that the church family will keep Sister McKay uh, in your prayers as well. And so many others that have experienced physical sickness, so many others that have experienced loss in this season of loved ones. I'm asking for the church family to keep um, my friend brother that I've known for years, Brian Kirksey, in your prayers at the passing of his godfather and his uncle. Um, continue to keep my family in your prayers um, as we continue to process through uh, this grieving season of my brother, my dad, and my aunt, and also for myself. Uh, and the family of Brother Alvin Darby continue to keep um, us in your prayers as we uh, grieve the passing of Brother Alvin as well. And so many of you may have sis situations and circumstances uh, that you are facing. God is a God of comfort. He's a God of healing. He is a God that can do anything that we need him to do. And so bring all of your cares, cast them 
throw them on the altar before the Lord and know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Reverend Folk will take us to the throne of grace. Amen, amen. Lord God, you're good and your mercy endures forever. Morning by morning, new mercies we see, oh God, and we're just so grateful to you this morning, Father God, that you saw fit, God, to wake us up this morning, Father God, for you have a purpose for each and every one of our lives, Father God, and we're just so grateful to you, Father God, that we can walk in that light. Oh God, we thank you this morning for, you didn't have to wake us up this morning, Father God, but you did. You put us in our right mind and you put it in our heart, Father God, to come out, Father God, in fellowship and in worship, Father God, to join in with one another, Father God, in love, Father God. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you saw fit, Father God, to plant our feet, Father God, on solid ground, Father God. You saw fit, Father God, to bless us, Father God, with health and healing in the name of Jesus. Father God, we don't take these things for granted, Father God, because we know, Father God, that you hold us up, Father God. We know, Father God, that you care for us, Father God, and that you love us, Father God. And in case we didn't know, Father God, we know that we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for that redemption power, Father God. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you saw fit to, um, to let your son die for us, Father God. Lord God, before we ask you for anything, we ask you to please forgive us, Father God. Forgive us for our sins, our transgressions and iniquities, creating us a clean heart, oh God, and renewing us a right spirit in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father God, your word declares that you would be our shepherd, that we would lack nothing, God. That if we put our trust in you, Father God, everything, Father God, will be manifested by your word, Father God. You told us to trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not to our own understanding and in all thy ways acknowledge you, God and you would direct our pathway, Father God. I thank you, God, for just holding us up in your righteous right hand, and when we fall, Father God, you lift us up, Father God. When we're depressed, when we're lonely, when we're just rejected, when, we're de re when we just don't know where to go, God, we can go to the rock, God. We can go to you, Father God, and cast our cares upon you because your word declares that you, Father God, will make the yoke easy. You said that your burdens are light, Father God. So we come to you this morning, Father God, surrendering God, surrendering it all to you. Lord God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for all those families that have been mentioned, Father God, and those that have not been spoken, Father God. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that your will will be done, Father God. Not our will, God, but your will, your perfect will, your perfect will of healing, Father God, your perfect will of deliverance, Father God, your perfect will of comfort, Father God, your perfect will of peace, God, will be upon each and and every one of us father God this morning I pray for our church father God I pray in the name of Jesus that we will come together father God in brotherly love and forget all those things that are behind us and reach forward to what lies ahead and press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus our Lord I pray right now in the name of Jesus that we will put our hands to the gospel flower and use what you have given us God You've given us all gifts, Father God. And we ask you right now in the name of Jesus to raise us all up to use those gifts to the glory and honor of God. Lord God, we thank you for hearing our prayers, oh God. For we seek your first early in the morning, Father God. We seek you, Father God. We give you the first fruits of our labor, God, which is worship and praise, oh God. And we say thank you, God. Father God, we won't doubt you, God, because we see the manifestation of your work, God. We won't doubt you, Father God, because we have consecrated ourselves. We've learned more and more and more about you, Father God. Our relationship with you, Father God. What you want us to do, how you speak to us, Father God. And Lord God, we just say thank you, God. Thank you for thinking about us, Father God. Thank you for coming to our rescue, Father God. Father God, we know that nothing 
Nothing can snatch us out of your hand. So we glorify you, God. We praise you and we worship you, Father God. We submit to your will and not our own, God. And we thank you, God, for hearing our prayers. We thank you, God, for answering us. We thank you, God, when man said no, you said not so because I'm God all by myself and beside thee there is no other so Father God we pray for this church Father God we pray for the people who are the church Father God we pray for our pastor Father God we pray for our finances Father God we pray Father God that we will submit to your holy will and give you the glory. Thank you, God, for the blessings that you've given to us. In the powerful name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of God. We want to make sure that we mind our manners, and it's certainly good to see each and every one of you out, and thank God that you pressed your way through the cold and what little ice is left to come and to gather together in the house to praise and worship the Lord, and, and we want to make sure that if there are any visitors in the house that we acknowledge you and that we uh, love on you and, and make you feel welcome, and so if there's any visitors here, uh, if you would just stand or wave your hand so that we can acknowledge you. Everybody's family. Well, family, y'all know how we do. Give some love to the back, Get some ushers, the love, and our COVID team out in the narthex. Just kind of squeeze that love through the doors. and Give it up in the balcony and turn it to the left so that Raymond can get some in the booth. And then give some love on the left and on the right to all of those in your area. Send some love to the front and swing it over to the musicians in the corner. Let it jump over and give some love to the choir in the back. And can your pastor get some in the name of Jesus? Amen. We do thank God and we do return that love back to you. Um, choir, give us a, uh, the ministry of the word of God and song, after which we will have our announcements by Sister Fulmore. And then we all know that this is the month that we specifically uh, bring attention to black history, but we celebrate black history 365. And so we'll have our Black History presentation after we have our announcements.
Good morning, Ebenezer. Good morning. Today is the first Sunday in February, and as we always do on the first Sunday, we're asking anyone to have a birthday or an anniversary in the month of February, would you please stand? Now, I have to laugh at this one because this is the month of February. So since November of 21, I've been hearing, on February 3rd, I'll be 81 years old. On February 3rd, I'll be 81 years old. On February 3rd, I'll be 81 years old. And usually, this, this is the time that he's usually slipping into the church. But when I left home this morning, I said to him, you want to be acknowledged? You have to come to church early this morning. <laughs> so I wish Miss um, Sabrina, is the two of you? No, one more back here. Oh, Brother Jones. All y'all guys are special people. Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. February is special people. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> Can we wish them happy birthday? Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear members. Happy birthday. As usual, we ask it if you are going to attend service on Sunday to please call the church office by noon on Friday. Although we celebrate our history and heritage every day, we bring special attention during the month of February. We're asking the church family to express your pride by wearing African attire during our Sunday morning worship services. If you would like to participate in the Black History presentation, Please see Brother Raymond. We are still looking for someone to volunteer for the treasurer position. Please call the church office if you are interested. We will have an important church meeting on Wednesday, February 16, 2022, at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Moderator Gamma will be presiding. All members, please plan to attend. February 18th through the 20th, North Jersey District Missionary Baptist Association will hold its 109th semi-annual session. Various classes will be conducted via Zoom for everyone. February 18th at 7 p.m. will be a virtual worship experience. Saturday, February 19, 2022 at 10 a.m., there will be classes for everyone via Zoom. On Sunday, February 20th, 20th 2022 at 4 p.m., there will be a hybrid worship service. All members, please plan to attend. Ebenezer the Community Development Corporation and Metro Community Center are partnering to sponsor an online auction on May 1st through the 8th, 2022. We are asking for the support of the church family. Please set aside money now so that you can bid on some amazing prizes. More information to come. Join us as we continue to journey through the Psalms doing Bible study every Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. If you need help getting the booster 19, COVID-19 booster, please inform the church office or call New Bridge Medical Center for an appointment. Beginning Monday, February the 14th, we will, we will have our prayer line via the conference call at 7 a.m. And anyone that don't have the conference call number, you can call the church office and I will give it to you. And it will be about 15 to 20 minutes. Free tax preparation, volunteer income tax assistant, free tax preparation services to individuals with low to moderate income, disabilities, limited English proficiency. In person, virtual, and drop-off services available at Franciscan Community Development Center in Fairview and Bergen Volunteers in Hackensack. Anyone in need of this service, you stop by the office and I'll give you a copy of this. As usual, we ask you to continue to pray for the church family and reach out to our seniors who are displaced by Hurricane Ida 
and to remember our sick and shut in. Thank you. Here at EBC for Black History Month this Sunday, we want to recognize the great accomplishments by Mark E. Dean. If you have ever owned the original IBM personal computer, you can partially credit its existence to Mark E. Dean. The computer scientist slash engineer worked for IBM where he led the team that designed the ISA bus. The hardware interface that allows multiple devices like printers, modems, and keyboards to be plugged into a computer. This innovation helped pave the way for personal computer use in office and business settings. Dean also helped develop the first color computer monitor and in 1999 he led the team of programmers that created the world's first gigahertz chip. Today, the computer scientist holds three of the company's original nine patents and more than 20 overall. Dean was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame in 1997. Mark Dean's inventions have helped advance technology and the lives of people throughout the world. Let's give our Black History moment a hand. We thank Brother Raymond for putting that together for us. Just to reiterate a few announcements um, for the coming few weeks. Uh, for those of you who, who have not been able to access uh, and get on Zoom because you may not have the technology or um, you may not uh, be able to access the app. Uh, there is a phone number where you can call in and access uh, Zoom. And so we will make sure that we get that to you, um, probably uh, text message, uh, Brother Raymond, Sister Fulmore, uh, will text that um, this week so that everyone can uh, participate, not just with the um, Bible study, but also uh, particularly on the 16th of February, uh, you will be able to call in. Um, we won't see you, but you'll be able to hear and uh, respond um, via Zoom for our Bible study and also for our church meeting on the 16th. Um, that particular week, as Sister Fulmore said, uh, we will be having prayer via our free conference call line um, at 7 a.m. in the morning. And I know that many of us are preparing for work and so it won't be a long time of prayer, uh, but we will have a time of prayer from Monday to Friday of that week um, so that we can come together and we can uh, talk to the Lord during that week. All of those that are interested in participating in that prayer and starting your day off with prayer please join us on the week of february 14th um, i mentioned this in bible study i believe and i want to mention it again uh, to the whole church family and those that may be viewing uh, from home i'm asking the church um, to participate in a financial fast for the month of February. You may be asking, well, what is a financial fast? Um, it is something that another pastor um, shared with us during uh, pastoral training that I was a part of, and he asked his church, um, all of the money that we, I don't want to say waste, but the money that we could have redirected in a better way and and myself included for the month of January I went through my budget as I do periodically and I found that I spent over four hundred dollars on takeout food on the month of January now that wouldn't be so bad 
except I also spent over $400 at ShopRite and other places. And so I ate through $800. Um, that's a mortgage payment. And I know that I can do better with what God has given me. And so I'm challenging the church family. Uh, go through what you spent the month of January. And if you find that there are places like me that you could have been a better steward, then for the month of February, instead of, um, instead of uh, doing those activities again and repeating those activities, take that, those funds that you would have spent in maybe McDonald's or Burger King or Popeye's and take a portion of that and tithe it to the church. And let's see what God will do. And I, I, I guarantee you that it will teach you as it has taught me uh, to even be more diligent in where we spend our money. And so I'm cooking more this month instead of ordering out and I'm preparing my meals uh, to take with me during the day so that I can save that money and then I will invest that money uh, that I would have spent back into God's house. Amen. Can we do that? Can we do that this month? Amen. Amen. Just for one month, we'll see what happens. Just for one month, let's see what happens and see how God will bless us. Um, please keep note and we will send more information out about the semi-annual conference from the North Jersey District Missionary Baptist Association. Again, there are uh, classes for everyone. There are lay leader classes, um, associate ministers, pastors, deacons, uh, trustees, and so please church family, uh, let us take advantage of these opportunities that we have to learn and to grow and to perfect what God has given us as far as ministry is concerned. And also to fellowship with our brothers and sisters in the North Jersey district. Um, that is important. And so let us make sure that we set aside that time, uh, the week of February 18th through the 20th, so that we can participate and have a good showing. Amen? Amen. I believe that is all. Um, music ministry, come and render another selection, and then we will hear what the Lord has to say to his people on today.
Amen. Lord, have your way in this house. There is a word from the Lord today, and we sort of touched on it and it was confirmed. It's always good uh, when God confirms the word beforehand talked about it in Bible study and, and, and I believe it was Sister Beverly or Sister Janice or one of the North Kakalaki uh, members uh, that mentioned this and, and I told them they were in my sermon for Sunday. And so we know that God has ordained this word for this time and for this people and so um, I ask that you would meet me in the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes, a very familiar portion of scripture, Ecclesiastes chapter number three, and I will be dealing with the first eight verses of that chapter, Ecclesiastes chapter number three. I will be dealing with verses one through eight. If you have it, please signify by standing for the word of God. And simply the word of God says this in the English standard version. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. Time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. The word of the Lord is already blessed. You may be seated. As I consider this portion of scripture and share with you, I want to share from the subject, the God of the changing seasons. The God of the changing seasons. Let us pray. Blessed God, we do give you honor and glory. We do acknowledge you as God and creator of the universe. We acknowledge your son, Jesus Christ, as our redeemer and our savior. And the Holy Spirit as the indwelling presence of God. Now, O oh God, we have come to the portion of proclamation. We've studied, Heavenly Father, we have labored over the text, but God, we need divine revelation. I pray, O oh God, even now that as you use your servant to preach this word, that, O oh God, that the word will fall on good ground, that it will take root that it will spring forth and produce not just good fruit, but good fruit that remains. Let those that have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. Speak now, O God, for your servant hears. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Amen and amen. The God of the changing seasons. 
It is a known fact that we, if we live long enough, we will witness changing of seasons. Meteorolo meteorologically, we know in many places, and we see it here, that winter transitions to spring, spring to summer, summer to fall, and then fall back to winter. And there may be reason, seasons that we, we don't particularly care for. Like I'm a spring baby. And so uh, I, I like the milder seasons of spring and fall. Many folks may love the heat of summer, and others may uh, like the bitter, bone-chilling cold of winter. That is just not what I like. There are many seasons, several seasons, that we may not particularly care for, but we understand that even the seasons that we don't like, even the seasons that we don't care for, even the seasons that make us uncomfortable are necessary and they serve a purpose. Therefore, it's incumbent upon us to prepare for these seasons, even if we don't like them, we still have to prepare for the seasons. For many, preparing for uh, these transitions from season to season is automatic. At the culmination of the winter season, many of us will put away our winter clothes and we will take out our spring wardrobe. Some will clean their house or do spring cleaning in preparation for the new seasons. Others will go out in the yard and they will rake up the remaining leaves from the fall in preparation for uh, the spring and the advent of new grass growing. Each season, we prepare in response to the upcoming season and those who don't adjust may reap the repercussions and the consequences or we might just look at them like they're crazy. Imagine somebody as you were coming to church today and in the cold weather, imagine if you saw someone outside with flip-flops on and beach uh, shorts and a tank top, what would you think about that person? They obviously have not made the transition to this current season. And I believe, and I, if I hear some of y'all talking, I believe that you would think that they might need some professional help. We prepare for the seasons as they change weather-wise. But are we as flexible and proactive when facing transitions of other seasons in our lives? How do we respond to seasons of sickness? Are we flexible in seasons of transition? Can we adapt quickly to seasons of loss? Can we adjust to these seasons or do we resist making the necessary preparation for our transitional seasons? The author of Ecclesiastes clearly informs us that life is filled with various seasons, various times, and we transition from one season to another in this life. But the good news is our God is the God of changing seasons. 
And if he has ordained certain seasons for us in our lives, whether we uh, are comfortable in that season, whether we enjoy that season, whether that season is something that we prefer, if God has ordained certain seasons in our lives, and he has, because he's the God of the seasons, then we can be assured that whatever season we experience, God has an ordained purpose for you and for me. Amen. The writer of Ecclesiastes is identified in the first chapter by the term Koheleth, which translated means the preacher or the teacher. And in the third chapter, the teacher has a word for God's people. In poetic fashion, the author informs us, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. For every season that we encounter in this life, God has preordained it for an appointed time. Somebody say time. And an appointed purpose. Somebody say purpose. The preacher, the teacher, the Koheleth uh, outlines the boundaries of our human experience by stating that there is a time to be born and there's a time to die. Then he proceeds to inform us of the various seasons that we may encounter in between our season of birth and our season of death in this earthly experience. It is clear when you look at the text, it is clear by the alternating seasons of good and bad of opposites that the teacher is aware of the conflicting natures of the seasons we encounter in our lives. And he's trying to, to impart wisdom to us on how to navigate, not just through the good seasons in our lives, but also the unpleasant ones. If we believe that God is the creator of all things and he maintains the order of all that he has created, then we know that he controls the various seasons in our lives. And so, beloved, uh, as, as my first uh, point to pull and to um, share with you from this text, beloved, we need to understand that there are various seasons in our lives and they change regardless of our readiness. Some of the seasons in our lives catch us unaware. Some of the seasons in our lives are surprising to us. I don't think anybody... Not even the prophets all over the world. Uh, I didn't see anybody that predicted that we would be in this COVID mess. Nobody. But here we are. Seasons sometimes catch us unaware. Seasons sometimes surprise us. Uh, and we may not be able to control the seasons that we experience. But one thing we can do, beloved, we can control how we react to and how we navigate the seasons that we experience. If we truly believe what the Bible says. The Bible tells us clearly that the steps of a good man or a woman are ordered by the Lord. Psalms 37 and 23. If we truly believe that our time is in his hands, Psalm 31 and 15. And if we truly believe Jeremiah 29 and 11, uh, where the Bible tells us, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you you a hope and a future if we truly believe the scriptures uh, that are found in the biblical text uh, uh, and the scriptures that we quote then why do we fight against the change that different seasons bring 
The sovereign God controls our various seasons in our lives according to his divine plan and purpose. And when we seek his wisdom and his will, he will reveal to us the reason for our seasons. And so again, the first impartation of wisdom uh, that we can gain from the Koheleth uh, in this text is that there are various seasons in life and they change regardless of our readiness. We may not be able to control the seasons, but we can control our reaction and how we navigate through it. My brothers and sisters, we are not helpless victims relegated to being imposed upon by the various vicissitudes of life. Rather, we should be active participants in God's divine plan. If the Bible is true and we know that it is, uh, then the declaration that we see in Romans 8 and 28 rings true as well, where it states all things work together. For the good of them who love the Lord and who are the called according to his purpose in every season that God ordains for our lives, there is a lesson to be learned. There is moral and spiritual growth potential and there is wisdom to be gained. Therefore, instead of us fighting against the change of seasons. The challenge for us is to seek the lessons that God has ordained for our seasons. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16 commands us to redeem the time because the days are evil. And it is on that text that I want uh, to uh, build upon uh, on the second point of wisdom. And I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, when you experience changing seasons, redeem the time. Pastor, what does that mean to redeem the time? What, what should I be doing? It means to take full advantage of whatever season you are in. It means to be careful how we live in our various seasons. It means to seek out God's wisdom and seize every opportunity to employ that wisdom in every area, situation, and circumstance in our lives. Again, there are lessons to be learned in seasons of abundance. There are lessons to be learned in seasons of scarcity. There are lessons to be learned in seasons of wellness. And there are lessons to be learned in seasons of sickness. There are lessons to be learned in seasons of peace. And there are lessons to be learned in seasons of conflict. There are lessons to be learned in seasons of singleness. And there are lessons to be learned in seasons of marriage. There are lessons to be learned in seasons of our youth, and there are still lessons to be learned in seasons of our advanced age. And as I shared with you previously, in the sermon, testing one, two, three, promotion does not come because we're tested. Promotion comes when we pass the test. But God is the best tutor to assist us in passing whatever test, whatever challenge our various seasons pre pre uh, present and obtaining the wisdom that is hidden in our seasons. As I previously stated, when we are faced with changes, with changing of the seasons, Many times we fight to maintain status quo. 
And so I had to ask myself, why is that the case? Why, if we understand that God is the God of changing seasons, if we understand that our lives are in his hands, if we understand that the seasons are ordained by God and he has a lesson in each and every season that he allows us to go through, why do we fight to maintain status quo? Why are we so fearful of change? One of the commentators that I studied weighed in on this issue and he stated these words. People cannot discover either the timing or the patterns that reflect God's purposes and work in the world. Nor can they see how God's creation coheres or comes together. And the result of not knowing these things is frustration. As people experience uh, life, they do not fully understand and cannot control. And Koheleth sees this frustration as one mechanism that can draw people to God and a life centered in him. We as humans have a tendency to fear what we don't know. We fear the unknown, even in the family of faith. Therefore, we struggle to maintain what is familiar, even if it is no longer functional. But how do we, beloved? change our response to change. I said earlier, we may not be able to control the seasons, however, we can control our response to the changing of seasons. Well, if you, we consider the latter part of the commentator's words, the frustration that we experience uh, when we cannot control the various seasons in our lives can be the mechanism, the very mechanism that God is using to draw us closer to him and to a centered life in him. And so... My last nugget of wisdom that I obtained from the Koheleth of this text is for us to let the uncertainty of changing seasons cause us to draw closer to God. All of us have gone through times where we just did not know what was going to happen next. We've gone through transitions from job to another job. We've gone through transitions in our life. We've gone through transitions in our relationships. We've gone through transitions in our financial status. All of us have faced times of the uncomfortability of not knowing. But allow that uncertainty to draw us closer to God, to seek him all the more, to seek his face all the more, and to run after him to gain the wisdom of the season. The Bible tells us that if we draw nigh to God, God will draw nigh to us. What better way to navigate through the various seasons in our lives than to be accompanied by the very God of the changing seasons. For we serve a God that is able to keep us and to navigate us through seasons. We serve a God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. We serve a God who can speak peace in our stormy season. We serve a God that can supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory in our seasons of scarcity. We serve a God whose name is a strong tower and the righteous can run in and they are safe in seasons when we are experiencing trouble and the enemies are all around us in our season of trouble 
When God, when the enemy comes to eat up our flesh, we serve a God that can stick out his a huge foot and cause them to stumble and fall. Because he is the God who is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, though our seasons may change, we know that he never changes. We sing that hold him of the church on Christ. The solid rock we stand, all other ground, everything else is sinking sand. It's unstable. It's unsure. But if we are standing on the rock, who is Jesus Christ? We know that we're on stable ground. For he is the God of the changing seasons. Let us stand. Maybe you are here today and you are in a season of transition yourselves and you came today not really expecting a whole lot. You just came because you wanted to go to church. You wanted to get out the house. But maybe God spoke a word to you let you know that yes though seasons may change he is the God of this of changing seasons and we don't have to fear when we face uncertainty because God already knows the purpose and the plan for our lives all we need to do is plug in to him and he will reveal to us the wisdom and the purpose of what we're going through. Maybe you don't know this God, the changing seasons. You can get to know him today. This could be a season of change for you right now. And so if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you can get to know him today and it will change your entire life. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that he's raised, that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. It's just that simple. Jesus did all of the heavy lifting. All we have to do is accept the gift that he has given us. So if you're not saved, this is my first appeal. If you're not saved, if you come down to this altar, we can take you through the sinner's prayer and you can be saved today. And your season from being outside of God's will can end. And your season of being in God's will can begin. My second appeal is this, if you're already saved. But you are looking for a church home and the Lord, the Spirit of God is moving on your heart today and you want to join here with Ebenezer Baptist Church, we would love to have you. We're not a perfect church and I make sure I say that because I don't want anybody to be mistaken in thinking that we're a perfect church. We're not, but we're a church that serves a perfect God. And if you keep your eyes on the perfect God, then you will be able to be stable and grow. If there's one for church membership, we invite you to join Ebenezer Baptist Church. You can come right down to the front and we will receive you just as you are. God bless you, Brother Glenn. Is there another? Come on, choir. Y'all sing that. Y'all sing that. I love you, Jesus. Is there another? Just want to tell you 
that I love you. Oh, I love you, Jesus. And I worship you. And I got to tell you. Come on, can we just worship all over the building? Lord, I love you. Come on, let them know you love them. More than anything, more than anything, more than your house, more than your car, more than your spouse. I love you, Jesus. And I worship. I got to tell you. Lord, I love you. Oh, I love you, Jesus. And I worship. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Is there another? Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. More than anything. Can we say that one more time? Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Come on, I think God needs to hear that from all of us. Lord, I love you. Come on, declare it in this house before your king, before your Lord. Lord, I love you. More than anything that's in our lives, God. Lord, we love you. Come on, if you mean it one more time, let him know. Lord, I love you. More than anything. Come on now, let him know you love him. Open your mouth and let him know you love him. Come on, give him worship, give him worship, give him the fruit of your lips. Let the Lord know that you love him in spite of it all. In spite of everything, in spite of the changing of seasons, Lord, we love you. We worship you. We extol you. We magnify you. There's none others like you, oh God. You are God and God alone. Hallelujah. 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 In spite of it all, God, you're worthy. In spite of it all, God, you're worthy. In spite of it all, God, you're worthy. Ha! Thank you. Thank you. Last week, last week I, I woke up. I had a song. You may be seated, y'all. I'll go on said that. A song in my spirit I was singing when I woke up. The title of the song was I Got an Anyhow Praise by Beverly Crawford on the inside and it's hallelujah 
Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. And it blessed me so much that I, I text Pastor Crawford because I met her at, at, the, at the Baptist Worship Center and with Facebook friends. I text her. I said, thank you for that song. I woke up singing it and it blessed me. And she responded back to me. And she said, thank God. And thank you for letting me know that that song encouraged you. Sometimes you got to have the anyhow praise on the inside. Amen, amen. We're gonna hear the report from the deacons at this time. Amen. 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 Brother Glenn and I have had many conversations. Um, he uh, works with, sometimes with Brother Kevin Gillespie, um, Brother Gillespie's son. And uh, y'all know that's a half a block away from my house. So I, I spend a whole lot of money. Uh, supporting you, your son probably too much so I'm gonna have to cut it down during the financial fast brother Gillespie I'm gonna have to cut it down but brother Glenn and, and I have just spoken and he came to my house I guess a few weeks ago he came by and we were just talking and he just encourages me every time I see him he encourages me and he said pastor I, I, I want to come to Ebenezer and visit I said, sure, come on, Brother Glenn, come on. You know, you're welcome. And he's, I'm thinking about joining. I said, well, let the Lord lead you. And I'm so thankful and so glad that the Lord led you here uh, to Ebenezer. And, and one of the blessings about Brother Glenn um, when we spoke after that, he said, Pastor, I'm not coming, you know, to get a title or nothing. I'm coming to serve. I'm coming to serve. I'm coming to support the vision of the ministry and however I can. And so I thank God for, for your spirit. I thank God for the gifts and the talents that he has given to you and I thank God for the anointing on your life and welcome we welcome you here uh, to Ebenezer Baptist Church um, those that are part of the new members um, ministry I will contact you so that you can go through our new members training so that you can uh, know what um, the, the vision uh, of this house is and so that you can plug in and begin to serve God and however God has ordained for you to serve here and I just pray God's richest blessings as you pour out to serve God I pray that God continues to pour into you and to be a blessing to you and open up doors for you to continue to be a blessing and so as the old church used to say we welcome you once, we welcome you twice, we welcome you three times in the name of Jesus Christ. Ebenezer, can we give Brother Glenn a rounding applause? Amen, that's right. Um, they're gonna get some information from you, contact information, and uh, welcome to the family. Amen, amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Um, deacons, before you sit, can you all move the table out, please? Thank you. We know that on the first Sunday of every month, we take the time to celebrate and commemorate the sacrifice that 
Jesus Christ made for us. And before we do that, we read our church covenant. And the covenant is the contract. It is the agreement that we make with each other on how we are to conduct ourselves in the body with each other. And I've said before, and I'll probably say it another 150,000 times, that we don't do this just out of rote repetition and tradition, but we do it to remind ourselves and to hold not only ourselves accountable, but to hold each other accountable as to how we should handle each other in the body of Christ. And so, um, choir, if you want to come down and sit in the audience so that you can see it, we're still working on getting our monitor in the back connected and functioning. And hopefully we will have that done soon. The choir, if you want to come down so that you can see the church covenant, then that's fine. Let us all stand for the reading of the covenant. Let us read it together. Having been led as we believe by the spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy Spirit. We do now in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge and holiness, to give it a place in our affections prayers and services above every organization of human origin to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us towards its expenses for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit. And if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to study diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world to be kind and just to those in our employ and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all men to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exhort and stir up each other unto every good word and work, to guard each other's reputations, not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others to participate in each other's joys. And with tender sympathy, bear one another's burdens and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation. Being mindful of the rules of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew, to secure it without delay. And through life, amid evil report and good report, to seek to live to the glory of God, who has called us out of darkness 
into his marvelous light. When we remove from this place, we will engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. You may be seated. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. Oh, when I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy on me. Bible says that the night that Jesus was betrayed he was in the upper room with his disciples and they were celebrating the Passover Jesus took the opportunity to give them a object lesson the Bible tells us that during the meal Jesus took the bread and after giving thanks he blessed it and he broke it he gave it to them and he said, this is my body, which shall be broken for you. After which the Bible says he took the cup, the fruit of the vine. And after giving thanks, he blessed it and gave it to them. And he said, this is my blood, which shall be shed for the remission of your sins. Who is invited to the table of the Lord? If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, then you are invited to participate in the Lord's Supper, but we don't want to come to the table of the Lord unworthy. We don't want to come to the table of the Lord harboring unforgiveness or sin. We want to release those things unto the Lord because the Bible clearly declares that is because of those that have done that that some are sick and some have even died and so we want to 
pray the prayer of consecration that the Lord will clean us up, clothe us in his righteousness so that we may be worthy to participate in the Lord's Supper. Let us pray. Blessed God, we do thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. And now, O oh God, before we partake, we pause. Pause confessing that we haven't always gotten it right, that we have missed the mark, that we have fallen short of your glory, that God, we have sinned. And God, we ask even now that you would clean us up, that you would purge us with hyssop and wash us white as snow that a blessed Savior, that you would examine us on the inside. And if you find anything that is not like you, that is unholy, unrighteous, right now, O oh God, we yield it up to you. Take it out. Let us not, O oh God, try to retain it, O oh Lord. But Lord, let us release it forever. Take our sin and throw it in the sea of forgetfulness so that we can be worthy in you to receive these elements in the mighty matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Let every heart say amen and amen. Is there anyone that does not have the elements? Please signify by raising your hand if you do not have the elements. Signify by raising your hand, everyone has them wonderful then let us all stand as we partake Jesus said this is my body which shall be broken for you eat ye all of it Jesus said this is my blood which shall be shed for the remission of your sins. Drink ye all of it. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible declares that there was no record of a benediction, but after they had sung an hymn, they departed out into the mountain of olives to pray. Saints of God, again, if you are to uh, have prepared your tithes and your offerings as we egress out you can drop them in the tithing box in the back or you can continue to be faithful in the area of your giving via tithely or paypal or you can drop it off uh, at the church saints let's make sure and encourage each other uh, the, to support the ministry here at the at ebenezer baptist church so that we can move forward in what God has called us to do. Remember all of the announcements uh, that we have stated. And uh, first and you know, foremost, uh, please remember that we are empowered disciples equipping God's people to maximize ministry. And lastly, love one another. Be kind to one another, for it is by this all men and women will know that we are Christ's disciples if we have love one for another. Have a wonderful week, saints of God. God bless you and may God keep you is my prayer.
Oh! 